Ogden, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yep. Yep. Me too. I just second. Sure. Yeah, we can wait for one more minute. That's just right. so more people can get in, and then we can start. I see whiteboard on the background. Yeah, I'm, I'm just showing off. <laughs> That's how you know you're a dedicated basketball coach when you have uh, the whiteboard in the background, ready to talk to talk basketball all day. Or oh, that's mean that you have two kids. So. <laughs> all right. Well, let's start. We have eight people for now. I'm sure people will be joining us too. I'll also live stream a little bit on uh, Instagram just so the ones who missed it, they can join us right now. Um, but first of all, I wanted to say thank you for finding the time and doing it. To me, that's that's important that people from all over the world are willing to share the information on coaching, even now when most of us have to stay home. And thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for for the invitation. You know, and just you know, I hope that I will say something smart and you know that might help other coaches. So. Um, I'm sure you will because during our time when we met in LA two years ago, we talked, I don't remember, for one and a half hour or something, but my notes were like, I was going over like this, over the phone, over and over again. <laughs> yeah, I can talk about basketball, so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe too much, sometimes. <laughs> well, uh, let's start. So the topic today is... Um, the basketball development and we'll be talking about both guards and bigs pretty much all positions and since you're director of basketball operations uh, director of player development for nuggets and obviously the experience that you have uh, people should listen to you and learn from you so first thing i wanted to ask uh, in your opinion what are the main skills you would work on uh, with guards on the youth level or somebody who who are, who are just starting to play professionally Okay, this is that that's actually a great question. So, you know, like, and I will give you like general answer and we'll, that answer will include like basically all the players, guards, bigs, and so on. Mm -hmm. So my opinion about young players. So when we are working with young players, the key is for them, we need to anticipate what will they be in the future. So what kind of basketball uh, they will play in the future and what kind of basketball will be played in the future. And that's mm -hmm. how we build them up. So like, you know, long story short, right? So let's say I think and I anticipate that in the future, like what is the tendency of basketball? It's going to be non-positional basketball, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone will be, will be able, will uh, needs to be able to play each and every position, right? And yeah that like huge thing is going to be that, and it is now is that the read and react basketball. So every time, you know, like you need to, 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 to be able to create and uh, make reads. So like you have like those two things, right? So now I, I will explain each and everything. So first thing is like uh, non-positional basketball. So, okay. Like now we have like, uh, what does it mean? Like, that's mean that basically all perimeter players will need to be able to know how to be a primary ball handler, secondary ball handler. So, and they need to know also how to play off the screen or off the ball and to play on the ball. Just like, you know, so that's just more like a long story short. Then if we have size, if we have, the, if we have abilities, perimeter players, if they can post up, yeah, for sure. They need to be able to post up. Uh, they, they need to have at least one go-to move and one counter. So, you know, like that's something that like, you know, it can influence the game, right? So mm -hmm. same thing is it with bigs, right? You know, so bigs, okay. So, okay. Uh, uh, do bigs need to roll? Yes, they need to roll. Do they need to make uh, uh, pressure at the rim? Yes, they need to do that. Do they, do they need to uh, search from the dunker? I don't know, post up and so on. Yes, for sure. But, but, Big also needs to be able to put the ball on the floor. They need to make catch that ball. Doesn't matter, is it pocket or on the perimeter? They need to know how to play from that position. They need to uh, know how to shoot. They need to know how to drive, uh, I don't know, uh, pass and so on. So, you know, that's, I think that that's like, that's, that's when I say uh, non positional basketball. Everyone needs to know how to play each and every position on the floor. And second thing, what I said, like, is like read and react. And this for me is like very important because like, especially when we are working with young players or development, 
just we need to make some kind of like um, uh, explanation. So there is something okay. called like uh, individual technique, and there is also which means skills basically, mm -hmm. and there is something that's called individual tactic, and there is something that we also need to work on is uh, is group tactic group and at the end is a team tactic. So I will okay. try to explain that through the example. So let's say we have like simple situation. We have high pick and roll, single side tag. So we have like uh, three players. So now I will explain what is like individual, individual tactic, what is a group tactic in, in, in like simple situation of three man game. So let's say we have high pick and roll. So let's talk only about ball handler. So ball handler has a ball, right? So he like play, you know, pick and roll. And let's say coverage is dropped, something simple, like, you know, just the simplest situation. So uh, ball handler play pick and roll. So now we're talking about his individual technique and tactic. So his individual technique is tactic. Okay, he needs to have reads. Okay, he has like uh, anticipate uh, pocket pass. Uh, I don't know, like a low pass, uh, late pass, uh, kick it out pass, then, he has a read, okay, when he has, does he have like one on two situation or he has, does he going to finish, what kind of finish will have according to his abilities or he will have like maybe he's a good pull up shooter, maybe his thing is going to be uh, pull up instead of drives and so on. So it's more about like, okay, that uh, individual player, his technique and tactics, so what kind is going to use in that certain situation. Now let's talk about that group, group, technique or a group ta tactic, which is super important, especially when we are working with young players, is just now like same player. Now we're talking about same player, ball handler. Yes, he needs to know what, what is he doing the best and what he, what he needs to do in certain situation. But also he needs to know what big needs to do. So, and he needs to know what that corner guy who will shake behind, he needs to know what, what, what are his reads as well. And so I will mm -hmm. explain that. So when you when he starts to drive, when he start to play that pick and roll, right? He needs to know that the big anticipate first one. He anticipate a pocket pass, right? So to play to play from the pocket. Then he knows that big. If he's a good roller, he needs to be low threat, right? Then. Uh, I don't know, continuity is like, uh, if they late switch, then he knows that he has late pass or even late shot. So he needs that big, that big he knows that big will clean up the glass. Mm -hmm. Or if he kick, that, kick out that pass to the shake guy, he knows that big will seal behind and we're gonna create like easy points. So like long story short, those are all his points because he's, he made advantage, right? If he kicked that, that to the Shea guy, a Shea guy, pass it to the big guy who sealed, he did his job. And that's, in the, that's group, kind of like group tactic. So now we can continue this story, right? So now he also needs to know, what else he needs to know? He needs to know about uh, that shake guy who is in the corner, right? When we started, he also needs to have his reads. So he needs to know what he anticipates. So what does he anticipate? So let's say first situation, we have high tag, right? If it's high tag from a uh, X corner guy, right? That's mm -hmm. mean that I need to see and then anti anticipate that cut situation. So corner guy needs to cut in that situation, right? So he needs to anticipate. So that's the same group tactic. Right then, if he has like, if uh, like, what is the second read of the corner guy? Second read, he shake behind, right? Shake behind, so he shake behind. He knows that when he catch that ball, like he has shot, and what else he has? He has that pass to the big guy, whoever who already sealed, or he has a drive, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, that's like if we start, to, if we work with young players, like, and you know, we develop them. I think it's key that we develop them like, you know, like, first of all, we have like, we need to have like wide base, like basketball wide, wide base, I'm talking about skills, and also tactically wide base, like, you know, to read and recognize situations, like, and especially that like individual and group tactic, because at the end of the day, if they recognize those situations and they know how to make, make, make a reads, five on five is easy. Five, five on five is the easiest part because whatever set play you play, and the end of the set play, you're going to play some kind of situations like, like those. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure did I answer you on this question. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, there, there are three types. One is you focus in on individual technique. 
to on individual tactic, which basically what the player has to do on court in order to be efficient at his role. Exactly. And three is team tactic where you need to know what the team is running. Uh, late, yeah, a gr group tactic, which means that like cooperation among two or three or four players. And then last thing is a team, uh, team tactic, which means five on five. Okay, okay, got it. So basically individual tactic, group tactic and team tactic. And mm -hmm. first thing is like skills, like uh, individual technique. Mm -hmm. And if we're talking about uh, team practice, would you include all three of those within one practice or you would separate it? It's, it's, it is everything, especially with, uh, with young, everything is connected. So you cannot separate that because you cannot make, uh, you cannot say, okay, uh, I don't know, like, uh, you just do GGJ, like, you do, like, cross, 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 and then, like, I don't know, like, finish. Yeah, you can do that, <laughs> which is fine. We, you can, you, it can be part of the practice. You can target certain goals with that, yes, but you always try to, like, kind of, like, teach and coach. So, okay, if you, if, uh, for example, if defense uh, put, like, a uh, hand in front of you, that means that you need to attack that leg, or, like, you need, you need to teach them those small things, which will will help in long term. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you mentioned that it's positionless basketball, and I fully agree with you. But when are the situations where you wouldn't teach guards to play in the post? Are there any any situations? Maybe player is too short or he's weak. Yeah, or like for sure. I, I I think that I said it's kind of like if uh, guards have has like physical ability to play on the post, okay. then yes. But if they don't have it, I think it's kind of like you know like. It, it might be waste, uh, uh, wasting of time, you know. Okay, got it, got it. I still, I like, you know, like, I, I just want to be sure, I, I just want to be very precise with that. Like, it's kind of like, uh, do I believe that guards will be best possible post-up players? No. Like, in 99.9% .9 for sure not. But it's always good to, like, you know, like, if they have a chance to to add that in, in their game, especially in, in when they playing youth basketball, I think it's it's beneficial, you know, because long term it can be like good thing for them. At least like you know, they they, they might learn how to guard other players on the post. And just mm -hmm. it's just kind and of like ba based on your experience, uh, what do you think is the most underrated skill or what what is the most underrated skill that coaches or players don't spend enough time on? If we're talking about the youth ones. A youth one, I, I would go with that, like uh, individual, uh, uh, individual and group uh, tactic. I would that's I'm like for I, I I'm very big on that because I think that that's that's foundation of the basketball. You know, it's like that's you know you need to know like uh, you need to know like elements, you need to know skills, but also you know you need to know how to use those skills and to recognize situations because mm -hmm. I think that's long term. If you are master of that, especially in youth basketball, if you're master of that, you can play whatever, basically, if you have abilities, of course, physical abilities, you can play uh, whatever league in this world. You know, you, you know basketball. Mm -hmm. You understand basketball, you know how to play it. Now everything depends on your physical abilities. You know, and of course, mm -hmm. like, just to continue, like, on, on to give you like, uh, to, to continue on, on, on that, uh, that uh, question is like, uh, like, you know, skill that's like uh, Aaron needs to, to have now and skill is that like, that uh, is super important now is uh, shooting. So shooting is like something that is super important. Okay, okay. And uh, based on your observation, when you're watching the rookies in the NBA, what do you think? What do you think most of them are lacking? I understand it's still individual based on player, but is there any tendency that you see with the players? Uh, I'm like like a rookie, so always like you know they're struggling with like. Uh, I I, I don't want to give you like. Same, I don't want to give you the same answer, but actually it is the same answer, you know, because it's just that the read and react basketball, you know, like they need to, it, it, because it's very hard for them. They're coming from the different systems, right? It can be like okay. yeah. from the all around the world, right? And they're coming from those kind of systems where they're majority of time, they're ball dominate players, right? And mm -hmm. then like, you know, they're coming in uh, NBA. It can be NBA, it can be Euro League, it can be Russian League, it can be Serbian League, it doesn't matter. It's like they're coming as young players and then they have habits that they're like usually ball dominate and then their role is completely different. Now they need to adjust themselves to the new rule, uh, 
new role, new role in the game, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you you covered that a little bit. So if we take the first year pros, it doesn't have to be NBA, but let's say somebody who's just uh, in his first year on a Euroleague team or on a top league team. Uh, what do you think they can do better uh, when they are playing junior pro to make sure they are pre more prepared for the professional basketball? Uh, Sam, I, I'm going with that. Like, you know, that's, I, I'm, I'm like very big on that because like, it's kind of like, if you know how to play situations and if you understand team dynamic and, uh, uh, gr sorry, group dynamic and group tactic, then five on five is going to be easy, easy, easy for you. So, you know, like I, I would go with that. And then like, you know, something like that we all need to be like, like for the young player. So if he wants to prove himself and wants to gain the minutes, right? He, of course, he, he wants to prove himself. Like, so mm -hmm. what, what is the easiest way for him? Just do hustle things, do small things, play hard defense, uh, mm -hmm. and rebound, uh, uh, grab 50-50 balls. In that, you know, in that way, they're going to kind of like uh, draw attention. They're going to gain com uh, confidence and they, they, they're going to gain trust. And everything else, offense will come. Like, you know, offensive mm -hmm. part will come. Just don't try to overachieve. Okay. And I, I know you're big on setting up the mindset for the workouts. Can you please talk a little bit more about that? Uh, okay. This is like, this kind of like, uh, this, this is a great question, you know, because that's question like it's, it's square. It's like, doesn't matter. Is it practice or is it a workout? It's like, it's, um, you know, my, like thinking about uh, practice is, is, is something that it's kind of like interesting, you know, so, and if anyone has different kind of approach or different kind of idea, please, you know, just let, let me know, like ask me or share your thoughts with me, you know? Mm -hmm. So let's say like, let's say uh, generally speaking, like if we have like, uh, uh, let's say workout, uh, what kind of like, you know, like things, what kind of things we need to know about uh, workout? So first of all, it needs to have individual approach. So, if anyone has some additional question before I continue, just stop me and let me know, or we can discuss about each and every uh, bullet points uh, separately. But I, I'll try to be very, very short in this first one, first four. So let's say it needs to have like individual approach. So because logically, right, every player is different. Uh, second, each and every practice needs to have goal, right? So that's also like, you know, each and every goal is different according to the player, according to the part of the season, your needs and so on. So uh, third one, drills. Drills, and this is my favorite thing ever, drills are just the tools uh, which helps us to reach our goals. So there is no such a thing as a perfect drill. So we have like drills as a tool, only as a tool. Uh, and the uh, fourth thing is methodic. What kind of methodic are we, are we going to use? So methodic is like, let's say, uh, and I'm big on that. Like we should use uh, basic methodic uh, principles, right? So from the simple to more complicated, from the known to unknown, from the fundamental to, to specific, or like from one zero situation to five on five, you know? For example, you know, but each and every methodic needs to be like uh, specific to the player or the team that you're working with, because it's just like uh, you cannot uh, you cannot tell me like or if anyone please if anyone thinks differently please let me know like it's not that I know everything I'm just telling you how I'm thinking about this because things that works for you doesn't mean that will work for me. So it's just like, it can be like same methodic, but maybe you have a completely different problem. Maybe I need to build my methodic according to your problem. So mm -hmm. I just need, methodic needs to be kind of like uh, specifically built to the player's needs. But mm -hmm. we still follow basic methodical principles, you know. Mm -hmm. okay. talk, talking about the goals, how many goals would you have per, per workout? Uh, usually like one, usually okay. one, but like, it's like, I, I, I would go with one because it's very hard to have two goals. It's very hard mm -hmm. to have like, you can like sneak small things. Like, you know, you can have like, okay, our goal today is like, uh, I don't know, like, let's say follow through. 
let's say we are working on our shot and 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 and, and uh, follow through is our goal today so and then player can be focused on follow throughs but like you know like maybe we can sneak uh you know, when I say maybe we can sneak, right? Maybe he has, let's say, problem with balance. Maybe I can put someone behind him and like, okay, every time he jumps back, someone touch him. So now kind of like in a nice way, I try to implement one more goal, but I wouldn't go like with, with, with more than one. Mm -hmm. So basically one goal, let's say, let's say shooting on a catch, but still, in the workout, you can still do ball handling or something or finishing as a warm up. Yes, but, but that's not yeah, exactly. But that's that's completely like, and I agree. That's something's called like uh, it's completely. Our goal is that yes, but like warm up and skills that they already know uh, or mm -hmm. skills that they are good at. Uh, I, 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 let's say we don't. That's more kind of specialization of those skills, right? It's less than or we are using those skills as a warm up or to jog their muscle memory. But goal of the practice is like whatever it is. Okay. Okay. Got it. And then, um, <clears throat> sorry, if we talk about uh, the short workouts, you know, the ones that players usually do pregame, uh, it would just be one goal without focusing on all the other warm ups, right? Or you would... yeah, that's a little bit different because before the game, players are kind of like they're preparing themselves for, for the game. Mm -hmm. So basically, yes, that they have just one goal to prepare themselves for the game. So, you know, like we don't have like any kind of like, uh, I'm talking, now I'm talking with players who have, who are playing kind of like heavy minutes, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like, okay, only, only, only goal that we have with them, okay, let them feel good, uh, let them make their own reps, uh, feel good uh, about themselves and prepare them for the game. So yes, our goal is that case, prepare them for the game. Mm -hmm. And you said uh, there is one goal for the workout but if we take one month period, how many goals would you try to set? It depends on the player, everything. Depend, depends on the player, depends on his needs, depends of like, like, are we in a hurry or we have time or like, you know, just, it, it is literally individual, you know. Okay. Like, or if you can like sneak two or three goals at the practice, that would be great, you know, like, okay. it, it, like you know, it's not like, it is not set in the stone. So if you if you can I don't know like as I told you if you can like reach couple goals that's perfect that's great so there is no like as I told you there is no right or or wrong there is no magic pills it just read and react there are players who are capable to to reach couple goals which is great mm -hmm. and the reason why I'm asking is because uh, the younger coaches especially when they start planning the workouts they may have five goals per workout or even more during the week. And so players, I want to say they maybe get better at all of them, but they're still average in general. So here your your thought is instead focus on something, just to make it your strength and then build up, right? More than less, yes. Okay. okay. So I, I cannot give you an answer, which is like for sure yes or no, because everything depends on the, yes, on the players that you're working with. You know, like uh, your approach, and you know, like. But generally, I think that one goal is like, it's something that you know, like, can give you good results. Of mm -hmm. course, as I said, like if you can reach two, three goals, that's great. That's you know. Mm -hmm. And if we're talking about in season when the players are having plenty of games, and especially if we're talking, of course, it's understandable that the ones who don't get a lot of playing time, they should work out extra. But if we're talking about the starters. How often would you want them to do that extra work to make sure they are improving? And how long should it be? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm trying. I, I didn't figure out that that uh, question. Uh, during during the season, let's say we take any junior pro team and the players who are starters on that team. How often would you want them to do the extra work? Same thing. It's like it's it, it is very uh, individual. So like you know like I would like with young players. I, I like I like them to be in gym as 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 long as possible. You know. Okay. So, and then like you know it's because it's always good to let's say we have like something. It's called like uh, uh, adaptation to the, the 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 to the load or maximum load mm -hmm. of the body should be four years. So if we reach like good four years for their development. You know when they're ready to have those four years they can reach their full potential so 
more than less is kind of like four years is kind of like uh, something that, uh, so my bad, it's uh, more than less is just with young, young players, it's always good to be like in the gym, but also we need to care about the, their bodies and you know, like everything, so. Okay, so even though, even if you can go with them to do the extra work, sometimes if you know that the player is banged up, you can do little intensity, just, just exactly. maybe they, you they can won't control, even... You can control it. Even if you see, let's say, if you see that they're kind of like uh, exhausted, you can tell them, hey, don't come today. Or, mm -hmm. okay, they're exhausted, okay, come into practice and shoot free throws. Which mm -hmm. like, or shooting free throws. Or like, you know, they kind of like, and then you make, instead of workout, you make a recovery workout. Uh-huh. And I, how I, often, yeah. So I'm just like, I, I just like, uh, uh i'm just trying to like can you give me like two more minutes just to finish like that thoughts about uh, practices yeah of course just something is kind of like just to to, to give you continuity uh, uh mm -hmm. on, on that so now like well, well like, last thing that i was talking about was kind of like okay we have those four things like right individual approach uh uh we need to have goals we need to have um uh, drills when you have a uh, methodic okay that's one thing now when we start to think about practices or, or workouts so now what, what do we wanna, how, how we want to think this is my mindset and this is something that I'm you know like kind of like if you ask me it makes sense but you know like same if you <laughs> has different thoughts let me know so what is the best my question is like what is the best uh, practice right so best uh, best practice is is a game right there's nothing better than a game right mm -hmm. so what do you want to do what what do we wanna, what do we want to do at a practice or workout we want to simulate simulate conditions and uh, situations from the game right so that's what we want to do so if it so this what that's like mindset right so now continue to this like what is the modern basketball so modern basketball is read and react so you need to react on different kind of stimulants right and you need to make like good read right to different kind of stimulants mm -hmm. and you need to perform in a high high level so at the end of the day, whatever you do, you need to finish right or, or to mm -hmm. give good pass or, or to, you need to be efficient at the end of, the, of, of that so okay that's a mindset so and continuity to that mindset at the practices we want to make them like those like those workouts needs to have some kind of like uh more complicated or 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 heavier uh situations which means that uh, that is something that will have players when the game starts that game become easy for them so this mm -hmm. kind of mindset of, of, of workout. So let's say about workout. So if, if like, uh, like I would, I would say about like in workouts. So each and every workout needs to have like these three elements. So first one is the reps. So we, which means basically jogging muscle memory. Mm -hmm. Second one, and I will explain each and every after, and I will give you an example uh, of, of like with kind of drills, different kind of drills. So jogging muscle memory, first one. Second one, activation of central nervous system. So which means quicker reaction on the different kind of stimulants, right? Third thing is uh, emotional stress. So what does it mean? Emotional stress mean, mean, means like uh, Jill's needs to be kind of like um, uh, competitive. So mm -hmm. at the game you compete, right? So you try that your practices have that kind of like those three elements, right? So now let's go, let, 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 let's give you example. So first one, let's say finishing. I wanna jog my muscle memory and I wanna do finishes, right? And okay, let's start with the simple things. Okay, we have inside head finish, I don't know, left, left, Floater. Mm -hmm. I just give you three, three examples, just simple as ever. So now, okay, now I want to challenge them, right? I want to activate their brain. Okay, I say now you need to need finish over the square. Okay, that's one. Okay, now, okay, now let's activate them even more, right? Now let's uh, activate uh, brain even more. So now I say like, okay, inside hand is number one. Uh, left, left, right, right. That's number two, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, floater is number three. Okay, that's now we have like different kind of stimulants, right? So now I say like, okay, game is four. 
Game is four. Every time when you score, it's plus one for you. Every time when you miss, it's plus two for me. Okay. Now we have competitive mode as well. So, and I say, okay, one. So he needs to like, you know, he does some kind of ball handling. And I say one. So he needs to react fast and to finish the different kind of finish. And plus it is competitive. So that's like beginning, right? And now I'm talking, now I'm like connecting all those elements that we talked before that, like methodic and then like different kind of approaches. So from the simple to more complicated, right? Mm -hmm. So now let's say I want to complicate that even more, right? So I want to build it because those are situations, right? Because let's say I started from the free throw line. Why did I start from the free throw line? I started from the free throw line because I'm trying to simulate a pick and roll situation. I try to simulate like when he's a player with the ball in a pocket and now he needs to make a read, right? And mm -hmm. I'm like, this is kind of situa game situation, right? And I'm like challenging players and I'm, activate, I'm activating all three elements, right? So now I have reps, I have proper reps, right? I have uh, uh, emotional stress and I have uh, activation of central nervous system. So, okay, let's complicate that more. So now I can say, uh, let's say for the sake of this discussion, now I have like, I have one coach in the corner let's say left corner, one coach in his, is in the pocket position. So one coach simulates, let's say, a uh, roller, second coach simulates catch and shoot guy, for example. So let's say he has now, player has two balls. So he has two balls, he dribbles with two balls, right? And now whoever shows the sign, he needs to pass to that guy and play quick, one, and let's say we have one more coach who plays defense, for example. And mm -hmm. now, now he needs to play one-on-one -on -one against that coach, or I don't care, it can be like floater, it can be layup, it can be, I don't know, whatever task you want to give him. So now, so what, what do we have in this kind of situation? We have read and react, right? So this is how we want to coach them. This is basketball. Basketball is read and react, a quick reaction on different kind of stimulants, right? So now he has like two balls. I said like, so he had to react. So he needs to anticipate a pocket pass. He needs to anticipate like, I don't know, like a corner pass. And then he needs to be uh, focused and ready to, to finish strong. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I just gave you an example, okay. So now you can, as I said, like you can complicate that as much as you want, but principle is the same. So now, okay, I will give you like another example. So let's say there's that drill that like majority of us are doing. It's just, uh, um, it's going like uh, close out. So uh, player is running to the corner. So he has a catch and shoot. After that second shot is catch and shoot. So first time is catch and shoot, of course. Second one is spot up, catch and shoot. Third one is close out, let's say pull up, for example. So it can be a fourth shot, but let's stay, let's stay on three shots. So this is like, um, this is kind of like, uh, it's very interesting uh, drill, why? Because let's say we have different stimulants, right? He has three different shots. That's a game, mm -hmm. like, okay, I, it's like, you know, like one time you're gonna shoot, second time you might drive, third time you need to catch a shoot. I don't know, like things are changing in basketball. So he needs to be like uh, mentally ready when he catches that ball, he knows he has like, he has shoot, he has catch a shoot, he has closed out. So basically you coaching how you want him to play, right? Now let's, mm -hmm. let's work on that drill. It's simple drill. It's basic drill, it's a simple drill. Let's work, work on that drill. So now I wanna give that like, it's like, uh, okay, I have reps, right? I have reps because those are reps that he's mm -hmm. using for the game. I have, uh, uh, I have uh, a different kind of stimulants, right? Like he needs to always mm -hmm. to anticipate three things. And now let's say, let's add competitive mode. So now, for example, he needs to make three in a row in order to, 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 to go on the next step. So a next step may be shake and same thing, shake, uh, catch a shoot, pull up, for example. But if he missed two in a row, he's going step back. So basically mm -hmm. we give him some kind of like challenge and you know, some kind of game. It can be that game. It can be whatever game you want, just whatever you want to, whatever is your goal, you know, like, okay, let's mm -hmm. complicate that even more. Now, okay, now we're talking about, okay, that's a situation, right? That's, we said like we have situations and now we wanna 
uh, we, uh, we, we have situations in which we, we, we are building conditions, right, to be as similar as the game. So, and we're trying to be kind of harder than the game. So let's say if you have coaches who have like, uh, who can play talk and defense. Now you can do it like, uh, uh, let, let, let's start without coaches. Let's say you can pass him the ball and you can say same thing, one, two, three. If you say one, he shoots straight. If you tell him two, he has pull up. If you tell him uh, three, he has drive, kick it to you and get back to the corner three again. So now we have stimulants. So it, w w what we are coaching with that? So we coach him and he catches that ball. He already needs to have three solution in his head. So he's already like, his brain is, uh, is activated. Mm -hmm. It's activated. So now let's complicate that more. Now let's be kind of like more situational, right? So now we have like, uh, let's say, we have guy who, one coach is playing close out, for example. So now we, we have like coach has ta task. Task is like, okay, if it's short close out, player will shoot. If, it's, if it is close out to the touch, he's going to drive, right? Now we have two more coaches. One coach is playing defense, he's under the rim. He simulates mm -hmm. weak side help. And we have uh, one more coach in the corner. So now we have situation. Player catch the ball, right? He reads, he has first read. That's driving kick, right? First read, so is he shoot or drive? He sees that it's a uh, short close, it is like close out to the touch. So he has that, he drives. Now he has weak side help. And now he needs to see corner guy, right? Who is mm -hmm. showing the hand. If corner guy shows the hand, he needs to pass and relocate and shoot three. If he doesn't show the hand, that means that he needs to finish over the big. And now we have two reads, right? It's like kind of the game, right? So mm, yeah. this is the kind of like, um, like, and now like, let, let, let's connect all these stories, uh, so like all, all that mindset about uh, work, workout. So it's just like, you can like, uh, like uh, you, you, you follow basic methodic principles, right? We said from the simple to, to more complicated, you need to have goals. And now you try to uh, build the practices or workouts according to the game. So, you know, like, and I think personally that like best uh, and the fastest results are, uh, uh, we, we can get, especially in, in modern basketball, we can get with situations. You know, we get back again about those situations because those situations is just like, you know, that's foundation of basketball. Mm -hmm. okay. And you're ready. Ah, I, think, I think that now, now I finish with, uh, with that like mindset, <laughs> mindset of, of, of the practice. It's yeah. like and and everyone, if anyone has additional question or thoughts, different thoughts, please. It's just it's kind mm -hmm. of like it is two way street. So I just share my ideas and my point of view. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask uh, one of the questions that I had prepared: uh, what's what drills do you like to use, and how could you teach the coaches to make sure they can create their own drills? But here it is. That's the explanation. Yeah, that's that's a mindset. Now, as I said, like let's get get back on that, like. On, 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 on thing that thing that I said about jills like jill as a jill means nothing jills is it's just a tool to to reach our goals so you know mm -hmm. that's, that's that's very important what kind of jill you're gonna build you're gonna build jill jills according to your needs you know mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. you know let's get back on like okay what is the tendency of mo modern basketball you want to coach them how you want them to play so, you know, that's like, that's something It's just very, I think it's very important bullet point. And how often would you give players kind of like uh, a heads up on their progress? That's good. That's a great question. Uh, there's a great, great question. Like, uh, let's get back on that story. Everything depends on the player. But like generally mm -hmm. it is like always good to have positive, positive feedback, to have okay. a positive positive approach because it just like it doesn't it doesn't sound good when someone when, when someone has a let's say negative approach positive approach is always good so every time when you can say something good about their progress it's good i think it's beneficial so mm -hmm. you know, like, and like you, can you like uh, you want to do it after every practice i think it's good to analyze after every practice because let's say at the beginning of the practice you tell him like you talk to your player that you're working with and say okay goal of today's practice is this and that 
and they they finish practice and you say oh man you did a great job you did this 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 and that is great so you just emphasize things that he did right and he gave his best and you know like you emphasize things you can after one week you can come to him and they say like okay our goal for this week was this and that okay we did progress in this, this, this an element. Maybe we should be better in next element. Okay, let's try to clean up that next week. So yeah, like I think that's like communication is a key. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so obviously, you're showing videos too. Yes, you show that's part. That's part, yeah. that's part also for, for 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 teaching part. Like you know, also those are also tools that we are using. Drills, videos. Those are all tools that. Uh, uh we are using to reach our goals mm-hmm. well, like actually, you, uh, yeah go for it. sorry sorry sorry, sorry finish. it's not like uh, i actually wanted to ask about the video uh how long do you try to make it to make sure a player is focused through the whole clip um okay can you repeat the question i i didn't understand oh uh, how often uh since now when when the coaches when i'm talking to players they say that when we watch the film and it's like 10 minutes after first couple of minutes we are we get bored and we're like losing focus and like waiting okay exactly. how long do you try to make the videos to make sure player is fully yeah that's full that's that's, that's, no, that's that's a great thing like it's like because it's just it's like um uh, I, I agree with that completely. So it's just like maybe, let's say, six to eight clips uh, of offense and maybe six to eight clips of defense. But it needs to be mixed kind of the clips. So which okay. means kind of like, okay, maybe, okay, this is something that we need to clean up. Okay, this is good. So this okay. is something that we need to clean up and this is good. So it needs to have that kind of like positive approach. Mm-hmm. So there will still be more positives than negatives. Exactly. Okay. It doesn't need to be okay. like you know, like like you know, when we start to work with someone, of course, like the majority of time when we start to work work with someone, it's more like how they say theory of chaos, right? It's more like okay, you're putting a lot of things there, right? And then when you start to work with him, he used on you, you used on him. You're gonna cut all those, like you know, like pieces that that you don't need you know and you know like that play, there, there's like different type of the players like you know some players just super like to watch video there are some players they don't they don't like to watch video so and you know that's fact you know so it's important that you as a coach you connect with player and you know what what he wants and what he feels good about yeah exactly that's that's the thing so it's uh, that's let's get back on like first thing individual approach Mm-hmm. It needs to be individual approach, and then according to the that player, you build everything up. You build up everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we when we met in LA, we talk a lot about tracking the workouts, and I really love your idea when you explain how you want you want to write down all the workouts that you have, just so a player can see what the work has what what work has been done before. So, can you talk a little bit more about it? How would you track it? And what do you use here? So this is like thing like, okay, so we have like, yeah, this is the same thing. It's my mindset. I, I'm, I'm not sure is that like good or bad, but it's just something how, how I'm working. So let's say if we know that like player has like, for example, player that you're working with, he has like finishing the practice. I will give you an example. So he likes to shoot 10 threes, five spot, mm-hmm. 10 threes. So we track that. So we need, we know, approximately how many shots he has per game, uh, per, per workout, right? So when we know that, now we can kind of like control that workout. So we can, so what, what does it mean? So let's say I want to increase intensity of, of workout. Now, instead of like spot up trees, maybe I will give him all the movement. But it's still mm-hmm. the same amount of, 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 of reps. He's still shooting 50 trees, right? But those are 50 trees now of the movement. If, for example, if I want to, to decrease load, I will give him 50 trees, but it's going to be spot up trees. So in that case, we can kind of control, we are trying to control that, uh, uh, th- their performance. So this is, that's a mindset, you know, and also we should know about each and every player. This is also a very good question because mm-hmm. it's like, what, what is number means 10, you know, like why, like that doesn't mean that like 10, 10, I don't know, 10 threes per spot is good for you. Maybe it's five is good. Maybe you can give like five perfect 
spot up trees and that's something that suits you and you don't if you shoot six seven eight nine and ten maybe you're gonna you're gonna change your mechanic and those are we don't want those kind of the reps we don't want bad reps so you we, you need to know like what is the number of reps that suits your player and then according to that you can build and control your your process of, of, of training process mm -hmm. and there's a question uh coach how to keep motivating the young players that's that's a great question Even the, <laughs> anyway has that's a, so I, I'm like it's just like that's also that's 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 I'm like I'm joking, but this that's also like that's also part of our job, you know. And now it's not that's that's kind of like hard part of our job. We need to figure out like it's like we we are paid to help those players, so we need to understand mm -hmm. that that's our job. So we cannot be like ah he doesn't want to. Yes, maybe 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 that's true. Maybe that's absolute truth. But we need to try to find all the angles and how we can approach to that person, you know, how like maybe to, you know, how to press those buttons and like what is like, mm -hmm. what is the trigger point for, for that, like uh, that player. Like one of the things that might help, like, you know, it can be like, you can like uh, make some kind of like, I don't know, like, let's say make some kind of a deal with that player, you know, like you, you need mm -hmm. to, you need to kind of like, con like he needs to, trust you he needs completely trust you he needs to understand whatever you're doing that you're doing doing to help him so you know maybe you can say to him okay okay this is okay uh this is my goal for this this week so my goal for this week is uh i will come every day at the practice prepared i will give maximum i will be always enthusiastic and i will um uh, I know, like I will make all those drills to be super fun and something that uh, it will be good for you to progress. And then, okay, now can you write me like one or two things that you're going to do this week for sure? You know, so now in that case, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure it's that's like, you know, but that's, that's one of the approach that uh, might give, might give a positive uh, response. Mm -hmm. and because, because, it, it is, it is yeah. like we are all together in that. So it's not like, it's not that, uh, you know, like uh, we are on one side and they're on the other side. No, we are same, we are in the same boat, you know, so we need to, mm -hmm. we also need to, as a coaches, we need to earn, earn, earn the trust. So, you know, maybe try, maybe it will work. Mm -hmm. And it all comes down to the first one that you say you have to know the player that you're working with to have that individual approach and knowing what what works for the player. Exactly. Because I remember uh, this season when I was working with one of the uh, players from VTB League, uh, I knew in the middle of the season his energy is going down and I'm thinking how I can increase it. And he has a dog. And whenever he sees his dog, he's like very positive. And so when I was doing his pregame clips, I would add him jumping to get the rebound and then his dog jumping like over something. And I know that he's exactly. Not yeah, exactly. Right? You find a way. You find a way. You think about that. Like, and this is also like something, you know, like we need to like always uh, analyze, analyze what is going on, you know, analyze, uh, you know, like uh, how, how we can help players you know always as you said like you, know, you, you came with uh, that idea with dogs great idea so it works so always analyze always uh, think about uh, basketball so you need to think it's just how it goes that's part of the job mm -hmm. it is live, li live process mm -hmm. there's a question so that's the coach from Ceska youth academy uh what do you think are the most effective ways to deal with stress for example before the games are we talking about player stress or coach stress? <laughs> that's a good question. I think players. Uh, that's also a good question. Like, you know, so it's like, I, I think that it's like, that. that's hard question. That's super hard question. You know, just like, if anyone has some kind of opinion, like I, I would also like to hear, but like, you know, just like from the, like, if I need to say something, usually when someone has stress, he needs some kind of like, uh, uh, 
he, he, he has lack of self-confidence. So it is always good to talk about that with that player and kind of like, okay, try to build up his confidence. Okay, man, you're gonna, you know, like, you're gonna be great today or okay, just go there and give your best, you know, no worry about that. You know, just try to like, you know, like, don't think about, don't overthink. So it's mm -hmm. try maybe to try some, some kind of way, some kind of way for that player not to overthink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one th one thing I wanted to add to it, uh, just based on the experience when I when I'm working with the players, if they can have a positive mindset, that will be half of the job done. But also, if they can be focused on the process instead of thinking of the goal, so instead of thinking I'll make it, I'll make it, or I'll miss it, I'll miss it, just focus on the process, and the stress will usually go away, or at least you won't be that stressed out. Uh, okay, that's a great, great, uh, great advice and great thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a couple more questions and uh, the listeners, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to type in the chat and then we'll, we'll ask Ogden. Uh, so mine is pretty, pretty basic and it's off the topic. What is the favorite thing you like teaching players the most? Doesn't matter the age, the level. Uh but the, the, like it's kind of like uh, it's like this like general answer like our job is super kind of like creative so like and every time when you have some kind of like different situation and different problem is always fun you know but generally speaking i like those like reads reads yeah, reads are always like you because you kind of like teach them and coach them so it's just like mm -hmm. I, I like reads you know okay in this situation you read like this in that situation you read like that Okay. Okay. Got it. And one thing I always ask coaches, because to me, that's a little bit controversial. How would you teach the floater? Would it be more of a push or a follow through? What's, what's your opinion on that? I'm like, it's, it's like, it's, it's unique shot. So is that something that if you ask me, is that something that Aaron should have uh, and work on that? Yes. As a, as a fundamental, yes. But is that something that Aaron should, should be, should be like go to, no, just like, you know, there are just like a couple of people in the world who is, who, who is like so good in that. So those, I would, those guys, I would embrace that. So that's the first, first part of the of answer. And second, like, I don't know, I will, I would always start with just foundation, almost like sh push shot. So you basically push, push, and now give me last fingers, finish with your fingers. That's how I would start. And then if you see the players, players is good and that he will create his own style you know so mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know did i answer you on, yeah. on that question? because it's <laughs> it's like usually that kind of shot is good to have and it's good to have like foundation of that shot but uh, it is like questionable how much time we should emphasize to that shot you know. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I still remember, I still go back to that conversation that we had in LA. So you were talking about that each player needs to have a move, a counter, and finishing over the size. Uh, uh, are there any either your favorite finishes that you like teaching the most over, over the size or the most common ones that you see usually help the players? No, it's kind of like, uh, uh, let's get back on it. Like everything is literally individual. So, you know, you can yeah. see like some like, you know, some guys are have like, I don't know, like keep that ball like Yanis, you know, keep the ball high, you know, like and use his size mm -hmm. and that he can, I don't know, create whatever he wants. So like, you know, everyone is different. So it's kind of, I cannot say hey, for sure, this is go to thing and it will work <laughs> for, for everyone. You know, I just think. Yeah, what, do you, what do you look you at? Have, to you, you should have some kind of shot that, that will help you to shoot over the size. Someone is can have like, let's say Euro step and finish with water. Someone will do same Euro step and finish with the runner. So you finish with mm -hmm. the one leg. Someone suits better water. Someone suits, suits better runner. So, you know, I, I cannot give you like straight answer. Mm -hmm. And usually, yeah. and usually yeah. players are like, you, you, you should also read players, right? They're going to tell us what suit them the best. You know, we're gonna see like when they start. We're gonna see what is the their go-to move in that that kind of a situation. So whatever mm -hmm. it is, their go-to move and suits them the best. Stay with that. So basically, before you figure out what finishes you would want to work on, you want to get the feedback from the players 
to uh, know yeah, what you can amp- implement <laughs> let's say pre-season you can pl- implement you know like both things and then you can see you know when you're going toward the season you can see what suits them more like okay is it floater suits them more or runner for example or turnaround mm-hmm. jumper or you know like it can be whatever mm-hmm. and now i just wanted to talk a little bit about about the coaches uh in your opinion what young coaches need to do in order to gain the trust from the players especially you know the ones who want to work with professional players but they don't have any playing experience or they have they have only coached kids and trying to move up to work with pros either individually or with the team i think that players uh, players uh, kind of like uh, respect uh, they respect people who ch- who give their who give their best you know they 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 respect that they respect if you're honest with the players so they respect if you are there for them so those are like regardless of young coach or old coach or you know coach in each and every level i think that that's something that like be honest with the players uh, care for them uh, they need to feel and they need to know that you're sincere sincere in in in, in your approach to them so and that you're gonna do everything basically for them so you know regardless of everything i think that those are qualities that that everyone should have in our job mm-hmm. that, yeah that's important advice to me because now i still see the ones who are especially the people who work individually with the players they are afraid to i want to say hurt the players and so they want to please them and are afraid to tell the truth but in my in my opinion it's all of us all coaches our job is to make sure we help the player and we help them reach their goals and so if we if we cannot tell them the truth then it's harder for them to get to those goals and i, I actually have only only one question left uh, unless somebody else will want to ask more uh, just through your whole coaching path, what was the biggest challenge that you faced? What was what was the hardest thing? Uh, for me, the biggest challenge was when I came to 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 NBA or USA. So because I changed literally everything, I changed culture, I changed uh, basketball, different approach to the players, different approach to the to the coaching. So I literally, I needed time to adjust that to that. So, you know, that was like, for me, that was the biggest coaching challenge. Mm-hmm. As, and what, yeah, and what was your mindset at that point? Like, uh, what helped you to get through that? It's just like, you know, like, you just, you know, like, I don't want to say you need to figure it out, but it's at the end of that, mm-hmm. it's it, you know. So you need to, you understand that you came to the different league, uh, which which kind of like has different demands, uh, different, as I said, like different, you know, different different continent, you know. So you mm-hmm. need to like kind of like okay to adjust to that to learn that to learn to first of all to learn and okay. you know, that's it so it's not like that's more oh, okay. there's no like right answer so that was in my head so. mm-hmm. and we have one more here uh, if you develop youth defensive player how will the practice look like what what are the details you need to pay attention to. That's a good question. Like it's kind of like in defense, like same thing. Like I would say, like it's very similar. Okay, we have that in defense. We have that basic mechanic, and we always said, okay, we have the slides. We have slides. We have steps. How we are using hands, and also like it's very important in defense. We also need to anticipate situations, right? So, for mm-hmm. example, I will give you just some simple examples. So let's say if you have a ball, right? If you are in triple threat, right? So what is my mindset? I need to use my hands and to make you hide the ball, right? I want you, that you turn your back. When you co- turn your back, then I can control you, right? So let's say, let's let's continue to, to, to analyze that. So now I'm like, same thing, I'm anticipating situations, right? So let's say if you're attacking with hesitation, right? So you're attacking with hesitation, which means that you try to load your feet and try to find, to, to speed up find angles and speed up, right? So what do I need to anticipate in defense, right? I anticipate actually in defense what you're gonna do. do, And I have, what, what what am I doing now? Now, when you have hesitation, I have steps, right? Because I also want to load my feet and be ready to react. And then I'm anticipate your drive and you, your pull up. And for example, I put my 
exactly, let's say, right hand uh, down. Why? Because I anticipate your cross change. Why is cross change? Because uh, cross is basically the fastest change, and I just don't want you to like to to to, to overrun me. So basically, long story short, I also like whatever. I, I just gave you like a couple simple examples. So like, yes, in defense also you need to work. On, on, on basic mechanic, which, mean, which means like slide, steps, uh, uh, spin, uh, but like uh, also you need to work on that to anticipate and predict situations. Like, you know, what you need to do on weak side, what you need to do when you guard the player, what you need to do, what kind of player you're guarding. That's also very important. You know, like know their, their tendencies and, you know, that's it basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would you do to teach those anticipate uh, to teach those anticipating situations? Would you watch more film with the player? Yeah, you or... can. Like... Yeah, that's like as, as you talked about that. It's like uh, that same thing. Uh, video videos are tools, right? We we are using that tools the same as the drills, right? So you can like basically, let's say we can. Uh, let's say I, I can teach him that element. So I can go through the script offense. Let's say I'm ball handler now, hell, like, has he, you need to quick react. Or, okay, mm -hmm. if my ball is here, your hands needs to be up. Or if my ball on one hip, your hands needs to be like this. So basically you can like kind of like coach and teach him. And also you can use, as you said, like videos. So like you can like um, allow players, especially new generations, they like to watch videos. So to see how different or good defensive players react in uh, in, in different situations, what are their reads? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. It's, it's 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 same as like it, it's it, it is coaching. So it's still coaching and same concept. You use same mm -hmm. concept for everything. Mm -hmm. Got it. Well, that that was that was great. And that one hour just flew by like that. <laughs> Already one hour. So. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah, only one hour. Uh, so since there are no more questions, I just want, uh, I don't want to waste your time and I want to say thank you. Thank you. Uh, for coming in. And this was, we'll, we'll save uh, this presentation just so people who missed it or the ones who want to rewatch and take more notes, uh, they can watch it on YouTube later. And if needed, we'll send it to you as well. Uh, last thing I wanted to ask, is there any way uh coaches can follow you maybe you have instagram or twitter or any way to follow up with you through email i'm, I'm the, the, the the only thing that i'm kind of like using I, it, it is facebook so like you know i have instagram but to be honest with you i'm, I, I'm not using it it's okay you know, got that's, it that's the only thing so okay so that, that, oh, like, just one thing like that thank you very much for for inviting me to this clinic and you know it was really my pleasure you know it's like and I, you know like you know that i like like to talk about basketball and kind of like share ideas and thoughts so you know like and thanks everyone for listen list, listening this and you know like i just hope that you know like i kind of like give you some kind of ideas so you can like you know develop whatever style you have or maybe i just told you something that you didn't think about so you know i just hope that i i, I said something smart so long story short <laughs> yeah that's that's what it is just for other coaches doesn't matter uh how experienced we are where we work there's always a way to improvement to improve for us and just if we can find through this one hour if a coach can find a little detail that will make his job better I mean that that was worth, and I'm sure I'm sure all the listeners who were here they found one. Thank you guys. All right, thank you again. Have a good day. Bye.